Here's a look at some of those mistakes that put lives in danger on MasterChef, just like this time in season 12, when the team challenge left everyone in shock. Chef, look, I figured it was going to kill the bacteria. Say that again. All right, before we go into the details, let's check out what the challenge was about. Mr. Chef, history, you will be feeding the brave women and men. Yeah, so basically, they were supposed to make a hearty meal for 100 hungry US Coast Guard servicemen and women. This was the first time the contestants had to work together in teams, and the judges decided to make the best of it. I mean, can you imagine the pressure? The teams were divided based on their previous seasons. The blue team consisted of cooks who had competed in seasons one to seven, while the red team consisted of contestants from seasons eight to 11. Both teams had to come together and create something special to impress the servicemen and women. Now, here's where the drama begins. Every team needed a captain, and the judges would have no part to play in any of this. The contestants would have to themselves decide on a leader. And after giving it a few moments, the teams had made their decision. So, can you guess who stepped up to lead the red team? You wanna be cup? No, nope, I'll be best second hand though. All right, so Alejandro it is. So good. That's right, they decided on Alejandro. Little did the contestants know, they were soon going to regret this decision. If you've seen the episode, you already know things didn't exactly go well for him. Things got so bad that his choices ultimately affected the entire team. The red team has Alejandro as a captain. And I guess being made the team captain got to his head because, oh boy, his confidence was through the roof. At the end of the day, nobody else raised their hand, so it's up to me to get it done and prove to the judges. But let's focus on the challenge here. The judges first dished out the rules for the menu. The team will need to devise a menu that includes a protein, a starch, two vegetables. The rules were pretty straightforward, but the pressure was intense, especially given that one of them would be leaving the kitchen. Now, Alejandro let the red team know their plan for the day. I want to go with the New York strip. We all agree? Yeah. yeah. You see, the last time he was on MasterChef, he failed almost every team challenge. Not surprising why he didn't want history repeating itself. To get through the challenge, everything had to be perfect, and it all started with the menu. Broccolini. 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 Perfect. Okay. Let's finish the broccolini with a little lemon. While the contestants got to work, the judges went on about the stakes of the challenge. And besides that, they couldn't help but comment on Alejandro becoming the captain. Alejandro has trouble taking guidance, putting himself in a place where he's depending on other people to listen. Aaron knew Alejandro's weakness and only hoped this time he'd actually do good. As for Joe, he didn't quite share the same thoughts. He could bring him to victory. If not, I don't see it ending well for him. And then there was Chef Ramsay, who'd rather have Michael be the captain since he had some experience in running a restaurant. But what do you know, the judge's concern turned out to be legit. Right off the bat, Chef Ramsay noticed things weren't going all too well for the team. Why is Emily put mushrooms in the pan with no salt on there? And this is where he messed up. Uh, no, hey, 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 look at me, look at me. What do you want as a captain? It was like he was trying to please Chef Ramsay instead of actually running the team. And guess what Chef Ramsay had to say about it? I was so happy that you wanted to become the captain, but run your team. Okay. Chef. Anyways, the red team planned to serve a New York strip with sauteed mushrooms, charred broccolini, roasted potatoes, and a citrus chimichurri. However, during the test run, the chefs were left unimpressed. It's raw. It's raw, for sure. What's more, there was a major lack in seasoning. I mean, it was bland as hell. The only thing worthy of mention was the chimichurri. With the way things were unfolding, there was just one question Joe had for him. Are you capable of taking all yes, that seed? Uh -huh. However, Alejandro confidently assured him that everything would be fine. He then walked back to his team and relayed the necessary instructions to ensure each of them could step up their game. But no matter what he did, he just couldn't lead the team. Uh, you could expo. You could expo if you want to. I, I, I understand who, what expo yeah. is. As for Shanika, she wasn't too thrilled with Alejandro's approach either. That Alejandro wants to be the leader and the cook. He should be in everything right now. She felt he should have been more proactive in checking on each station instead of standing at the grill and cooking all 101 steaks by himself. Soon enough, the red team was busy prepping the first table of steaks, but their efforts fell short when Chef Ramsay came over to inspect. Our first bloody table. The steak's cold. I'm not gonna let you just send towels. No. Chef Ramsay then commanded them to heat everything up properly before continuing. To add to the pressure, he decided to move the Coast Guard guests, who were initially assigned to the red team, over to the blue team instead. And this added more strain on Alejandro and his crew. The tension in the kitchen was palpable as they scrambled to fix their mistakes and prove themselves. And just when everyone thought the situation couldn't possibly take a turn for the worse, it did. And no points for guessing, it was all thanks to Alejandro. They're raw. We can still cook them. If you couldn't understand, let me help you. Alejandro's tray of steaks met the floor in a tragic accident. In a normal situation, the person would toss steaks in the trash, but not him. Alejandro nonchalantly tossed them right back onto the grill, and Chef Ramsay, with his eagle eye, caught him red-handed. And let me tell you, he was utterly appalled by Alejandro's actions. I was just there in the corner there, and I saw a tray of steaks drop. But wait till you hear his explanation. Chef, look, I figured it was gonna look, kill the bacteria. Look, 
Say that again. His complete disregard for hygiene and common sense was absolutely beyond Chef Ramsay. So what does he do next? You think I'm going to keep you as a captain? You better have a meeting right now. Michael was asked to step in, and he immediately seized the opportunity to take charge. Surprisingly, the red team instantly warmed up to Michael's leadership. He turned out to be a much-needed beacon of direction and decisiveness in their chaotic kitchen. After a round of deliberation, the judges made their decision on who was going home. Alejandro. We all saw that coming, right? Chef Ramsay remarked that he'd never witnessed a contestant in this competition scoop food off the floor and try to serve it. Alejandro's departure marked the third consecutive elimination of a former semi-finalist. But you know what? When it comes to maintaining hygiene, Alejandro wasn't the only one who had a hard time. Remember Max from season two of MasterChef? He faced a similar challenge during their very first team task on the show. In this episode, all the contestants were tasked with cooking up a storm at the LA Times cafeteria, located right in the heart of downtown Los Angeles. It was a crucial moment for Max and the rest of the competitors as they had to prove their culinary skills right under the nose of a tough panel of judges. Equipment that I've never seen, this is gonna be chaos. Each team had a solid two and a half hours to get everything ready, followed by another two hours to serve up a full spread. They had to whip up soup, salad, pizza, a special dish of the day, and dessert for a hungry crowd of 350 guests in the cafeteria. But before we dive deeper, you need to check out what Max thought about the cafeteria food. I never liked cafeteria food. It's very low quality. Okay, so now that you've heard what he had to say, let's remember this one little comment because trust me, it's super important and totally relevant to what I'm about to dive into. After nailing the last elimination challenge with their top-notch dishes, Max and Derek got the honor of being team captains. They each got to pick their squad for the next round. Max went first and picked Christian, Alejandra, Giuseppe, Tony, Tracy, Esther, and Jennifer to be on his team. Derek, on the other hand, went with Susie, Adrian, Alan, Ben, Aaron, Jenny, and Christine for his crew. After the teams were chosen, it was time to hash out the menu. Each team got to decide what dishes they wanted to prepare, and then they split up the tasks among themselves. However, not everyone on the blue team was entirely happy with the way Max was leading the charge. Some felt his approach could have been more inclusive and open to different ideas, which caused a bit of tension among the team members. No! No! No, 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 no. Input was taken into consideration at all. It was as if he was handing out roles to each contestant without even bothering to talk to them beforehand. I just assumed that a guy like Tony would know how to season me as looks can be deceiving. During the cooking showdown, both teams had their fair share of issues with their special dishes. But it seemed like the blue team, well, they had a bit more trouble, especially Tony. Pretty soon, it was time to start serving meals to the customers. The lineup of 350 people began streaming through the doors, and the place was buzzing with excitement. The first misstep happened when just Giuseppe ran out of pizza. Noticing this, Judge Joe immediately started to turn people away. It was a pretty tense situation as the crowd started getting impatient. Giuseppe was scrambling to make more, but the damage was already done. Joe's decision to send people away didn't sit well with everyone either, since they'd be losing points. Oh. Move on. They're losing votes, Giuseppe. You see this? This is all. But there was an even more troubling mistake someone in the blue team had made. Any guesses who? Burgers. Tony is being subpar right now. Tony was getting swamped with burger orders, and the line of customers kept growing. He wouldn't stop nagging about how they were going to lose points if things didn't speed up. The pressure was intense, and it felt like something had to give. But guess who came through in the clutch? Make up for what Tony can't do. I can't find a clean tray to bring them out on. Max took his captaincy as a green light to do whatever he wanted. He felt like it gave him free reign to make his own decisions, even if they caused others harm. I totally get that he was trying to help out, but placing burger patties on a dirty cookie tray and contaminating the meat is just beyond gross. It's like he didn't even think about how disgusting it was to put fresh meat on something that grimy. It's not just that the tray was dirty, it was downright filthy. You wouldn't believe what the tray had on it in the first place. Tray that has some nuts on it. I'm in a hurry. Cafeteria food, not fine dining. I really don't care. So just because it's not fine dining, hygiene doesn't matter. Seriously? Hygiene is a big deal no matter where you eat. And this isn't just about cleanliness. What if someone had a nut allergy? That could be life-threatening. It's really irresponsible to say he couldn't care less when it could end up costing someone's life. Remember when he made that comment about cafeteria food? He always complains about how low quality it is, but he's so wrapped up and getting things done that he ends up serving low quality food himself. Talk about hypocritical, right? He was pointing fingers at the cafeteria, but didn't even notice he's doing the exact same thing. Now, imagine Chef Ramsay's reaction when he found out about the contamination. Here. There's nuts on the burger. 
and all because of Max's mistake, all 26 burgers had to be thrown out. Gotta go in the trash. Get rid of them, Tony. You don't serve off of the dirty. And it doesn't take a genius to guess what happened next. We run to the walk-ins, they have frozen shrimp, and a little bit of chicken. Yeah, they ran out of all the burgers. To make things even crazier, they ended up handing out more empty plates. Like, talk about a mix-up, right? It's gonna be a little bit, though. Once the challenge was over, it was clear which team was gonna face the elimination round. And I think we all know which team it is. Well, that wasn't a hard guess, was it? If only Max hadn't contaminated those 26 burger patties, who knows? Maybe his team would have had a better chance. Now, although I'd love to sit here and go on and on about how Max messed up, I think there is someone who made an even worse mistake. Well, this contestant from season two was also a part of Max's team for the cafeteria challenge. I think you know who I'm talking about, right? Gotta go for the pressure test. You don't sleep at night. Yeah, I'm talking about Giuseppe. And this time, he was facing the pressure test. And let me tell you, he messed this one up so badly that I almost feel bad for him. I mean, how hard can making eggs be, right? Piece of cake, if you ask me. Now, while the eggs in themselves weren't a huge problem, the sauce was. It's a very technical sauce. Super temperamental. It can separate, it can seize up. Now, here comes the real challenge. Usually the contestants are given at least 45 minutes of cooking time, but this was different. I guess the judges knew the dish was too easy, and nearly anyone can nail it in 45 minds. So they decide to do the unthinkable. To be presented at the end of 30 minutes. Wait, what? Did they say 30 minutes? Well, leave it to the judges to turn up the heat. As for the contestants, safe to say they were concerned, especially Ben. A second for everything perfectly the first. This guy knew exactly how to whip up the dish. I mean, the dude made them from scratch every morning for breakfast. And if he was so cautious, imagine how the others must be, especially Giuseppe, who's never made it before. During the cooking, the judges went around asking everyone who they thought would be leaving the competition. And almost everyone had only one answer. I see a lot of confidence in Giuseppe, but I'm hoping for the best Giuseppe. Part. I think it had to do with the fact that he had no experience in making the dish. But who knows, he might just prove them wrong. But that wasn't the case with Giuseppe, because the next thing you know, he was struggling with the eggs. And time was not on his side. My God, it was so undercooked. I just gotta take him out. In a frazzle, he just went with whatever he had cooked, even if it were undercooked egg. I just gotta put this uh, blah egg on the muffin with the ham. The more he tried to reach for perfection, the further he went away from it. Oh, Fold the egg whites over that yolk. Oh man, it was a disaster. And just like that, the test came to an end and the competitors brought their dishes forward. It was time for Giuseppe's dish, and I think you can imagine the judge's reaction. Just slide out right now. Undercooked? It's a little undercooked. His plate looked like a disaster, and according to Chef Ramsay, his egg wasn't even on the muffin. In fact, the egg was so undercooked that Chef Ramsay couldn't help but frown at Giuseppe's failed attempt. But hey, at least Giuseppe was aware of how much he messed up, unlike many other contestants who shot back with arrogance. The egg's rule. Sandwiched in disaster right now. But here's the thing. I think there's a stark difference between undercooked and straight up raw, and Giuseppe clearly needed to learn the difference. See, I get that raw eggs are a delicacy in some cultures, but let's not forget that salmonella exists. Anyway, fast forward to the final showdown, and it was time for all five competitors to face the judges. Ben, Susie, and Alejandra breathed a sigh of relief as they were declared to be safe. Now, this left us with Derek and Giuseppe in the hot seat, a decision that seemed obvious to everyone watching. Chef Ramsay lamented the difficulty of sending either home, but the final call came down to one crucial factor, the eggs benedict dish. The decision boiled down to raw eggs versus a shortage of sauce. And I think it's pretty clear which one deserved to go. Giuseppe, you, across this competition, have been a breath of fresh air. Well, that was one harsh elimination, but definitely a deserving one. Moving on to our next pick, and this contestant isn't just dangerous, but also disgusting. Season five of MasterChef started off with a wild moment, all thanks to Astrid. In episode one, the contestants were tasked with a challenge which was unusually simple. Now, you must be wondering what's the deal with the mirror. Well, here's the reason behind it. We need you to put yourself on a plate. See what I mean? Considering the simplicity of the challenge, Astrid knew it was her time to shine. Dish is coriander crusted shrimp from Louisiana. This is me on a plate with a little bit of like. And well, this round wasn't like the usual auditions. So As you cook, we'll be watching your every move. What we see, you will be going home.
It was pretty obvious that not everyone would snag that apron, but calling contestants aside right in the middle of the competition? Now that's something else. I mean, imagine being so close and then suddenly getting the boot. It's not just about the competition anymore, it's like they're messing with people's hopes and aspirations right when they're starting to believe they might actually have a shot. I mean, don't you think they could have at least let them go a bit further before dropping the bomb? Anyway, Astrid was one among the nine home cooks that were not accepted into the MasterChef kitchen. But seeing how heartbroken the contestants were, guess what the judges decided to do? We are not giving up on you just yet. That's right, a second chance. How rare is that? I mean, it's like winning the lottery. Astrid was so determined not to blow it this time because, well, it was her last shot. But guess what? She messed it up anyway. And the reason why might surprise you. During the second audition round, Astrid was a complete mess. Like, not just figuratively, but literally. She was behaving as though she owned the place, nonchalantly tossing peels and scraps of food onto the floor without a care. It was pretty appalling, honestly. Even if she did consider herself the queen of the space, that's definitely not how one should treat it. It was not just gross, but also incredibly disrespectful to everyone around. Even the other contestants were totally shocked by what she did, so you can just picture how the judges must have felt about it. Seeing her make a mess was beyond gross, and Joe simply couldn't let it slide. With determination, he walked over to her station with some words of advice. Or maybe it was caution. This is not gonna fly. This is disgusting. He didn't just point out her slacking in kitchen cleanliness, but also made it clear to everyone in the kitchen that things need to change. His message was loud and clear, addressing the need for better hygiene practices. Honestly, I'm usually not a big fan of Joe, but this time, he definitely hit the mark by calling her out. I mean, seriously, who even operates like that these days? And when did it become okay to neglect basic kitchen hygiene? It's such a fundamental thing that shouldn't be overlooked. Keeping things clean and tidy in the kitchen is important not just for appearances, but for everyone's health and safety. We have sanitary standards. This is dangerous. You're gonna fall. You're gonna hurt yourself. If this is the kind of hygiene she follows in the MasterChef kitchen, then imagine how it must be at home. Not much, I believe. Well, of course she couldn't care less about all of her antics being telecast on national TV. All in all, Joe's anger was totally justified. MasterChef is practically raising its contestants to work in restaurants. And in restaurants, you can just throw waste on the floor and get away with it. Take this as a warning, because if you were in my kitchen, you'd be taking a taxi home. After that wild confrontation with Joe, Astrid wasn't too sure of making it further into the competition. But the judges decided to show mercy. Honestly speaking, they should have kicked her out. But I guess it was her lucky day. But do you know what's the craziest part? What she said in her confessional after Joe left. Focus. Thought they had people they cleaned. Yeah, how about some arrogance, right? I mean, the fact that she made a comment like that speaks volumes about her character. And with that, we've come to the end of the video. So, can you think of more times when things got dangerous on MasterChef? Make sure to let me know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to drop a like, subscribe, and turn on my post notifications. And if you want to see something crazier, then don't forget to check out the next video right here. It's even crazier.